Hi, my name is Rachel and I've been living with MS for 10 years. My name is Natalie and I've been living with MS for 21 years. My name is Robbie and I've been living with MS for 31 years. My name's Suk, I've been living with MS for six years. My name is Olga Ciccarelli, I've been working with MS research for 20 years. I'm Jeremy Chataway and I've been researching multiple sclerosis for about 25 to 30 years. Today we're here to talk about research and how it can help further our understanding of multiple sclerosis. What's currently happening in the research world, what's developing at the moment, and to raise our awareness as well. Each person with MS has a very unique journey. The symptoms go up to nearly 100. They kind of melt in the heat. Walking was like walking through mud. It will also affect cognitively and the fatigue. I lost my confidence a bit because I would say things and people would look at me and say, what's wrong with her? It's almost like a foreign language. It's like when you have computed it and want to speak, they might have left a room. It might be night, it might be six hours later. You're just behind and it only takes a little. And how much that will affect then your confidence. I had my first relapse in 89. Around then there was one drug. Apart from that, there was nothing until about 12 years ago. When I first was diagnosed, I often wet myself in public. <laughs> Right, and, and the thing is, the drug that I'm on now that controls my bladder, it's given my, my life back, actually. I think there's that old slogan, diagnose and adios, because doctors didn't know what to do with MS patients. So I think it's really key that now we have choices, we have options, and I think people with MS are living better and longer lives. It's definitely going to be exciting, speaking to the researchers. Without research, you know, we wouldn't have our treatments. That's a hidden side for us. We take the pills. We wanted to meet the people that make the pills. Good afternoon. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, pleasure. So these were sort of all the um, research team, yes. all the doctors and the nurses. And then we have the physicists, and um, we'll do a lot of MRI. What excites you now about how research is progressing? We're very excited by the progress that has been made in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. 20 years ago, there were no treatments. Now there are over a dozen. I'm getting excited about getting some early signs of medications having an effect in progressive multiple sclerosis. I think on the technology side, MRI is advancing all the time. We use MRI in MS, this very advanced imaging techniques, for three reasons. To help the diagnosis of MS, and to predict prognosis, and to monitor response to treatment. In the last 10 years, MS is the only neurological disorders for which more than 10 different treatments have become available. If things move at this rate, hopefully soon we have also treatment for progressive MS. We're very interested in what are called repurposed drugs, so drugs that are used for other things, for example, simvastatin, that is used in millions of people as an anti-cholesterol drug, but the animal work clearly shows that it could well be useful in progressive MS, as did the trial that we completed a few years ago. A lot of work goes into this by a lot of people. Research doctors, nurses, MRI, physicists, mm. pharmacists. So it's a big team effort to put a trial together. Yeah. And we have what's called the MS STAT-1, which was the mid-phase mm -hmm. trial. And we had 140 people with progressive multiple sclerosis taking part. We measured the effect of the simvastatin against a dummy drug right. on MRI. That was positive, and now we've moved on to the final MS STAT two trial. We have about 30 centres around the country now and over 500 people with secondary progressive MS have taken part in that trial. Please explain what role patients play in research. It is crucial because it helps the doctor to do research which is based on patients' needs. I think patients and engagement are central to research. No one takes part, then no progress can take place. I really am, was really keen for people, if they so wish, to take part in whatever projects are available at the time. We have to support you, the researchers, yeah. you know, because, you well, know. Well, it's a, you know, it's we're a all in it together, aren't we? We're all yeah, in the, the battle together. I think getting MS now is a heck of a lot better mm -hmm. than it certainly was a decade or, yeah, yeah. In, for it's sure, two time. decades. Yeah. I didn't realise it takes 20 years for a drug to, you know, research be passed. And I, I really thought, goodness me, I, I really looked at things from a different perspective. Sometimes with MS, you feel very isolated mm -hmm. or not alone. And there's a whole team of researchers uh, behind us looking for a cure or looking to how to make our life better. Knowing that there's so much research going on can also help you. You know, that takes away from the anxiety to like, actually there is something going on. Yeah. I haven't been forgotten about. Yeah. 
I think we're in a very positive place in all of our battles against multiple sclerosis. And I think we're starting to tame multiple sclerosis. But we have to keep our foot to the pedal to finish the job. And everyone, everyone can make a contribution here and does make a contribution here. I suppose MS is like taking the bricks out of your life and, and research is slowly sort of like um, cementing. <laughs>